Welcome back everyone, Tim here, TRD Adventures. Coming at you with a new little series uh, to the top. Today we're going to talk shocks. Um, I'm going to go over some different brands of shocks that I've used, length of shocks you're looking for when you're getting your uh, G-Speed LCG rig all set up and ready to rock and roll while you're in the building or gathering parts, or you're looking to upgrade and change uh, some parts out. So, um, shocks easily one of the most important parts of your brakes overall performance uh, combo that um, directly not just tires but tire foams um, tire foams can hurt the shocks and shocks can hurt the phones of performance and both of them can act similar um, when they're hurting your rig um, not you know it's just a you know I've been there done it got a rig all built up everything's good you've researched top-notch and you just throw some shocks on it and then you're disappointed and you think something's wrong and it can easily be a simple fix with some shock tuning some springs and stuff like that so very important thing to know first all um, when you're deciding and picking out shocks and or your foams i'm going to do another video on tires and foam specifically um, too um, and some of this will carry over too so very important thing at least knowing your vehicle's overall weight um, that's going to be very, 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 very important is at least knowing the overall weight. Now, if you have a four corner scale that can really break down and everything like that, that just makes it even better. I don't have one of those yet. I haven't invested in one. I really, really want one. So you're at least going to know your overall weight. Um, that is going to play key in deciding on most of this stuff because you don't want to run a super light you know 15 or 20 weight oil if your truck weighs you, know, you don't want to run that late light anyway generally but you don't want to run a super light oil when your truck is on the heavier side when you're talking around that five or seven pounds or even five pounds five, upper fives but then again you also don't want to run you know 50 60 weight oil if your truck weighs three and a half pounds so real quick so on all that you got your first you know your tr truck's weight so some shocks that I've used and have good luck with and my two and the two I've had the best luck with and I mean obviously my more preferred shock setup. Um, so I've used Desert Lizards. They're a good shock. They're a budget friendly shock. You can get a set of four for like 50 or 60 bucks. Uh, they're internally um, controlled. <clears throat> all the springs are inside. You control all that. Most of the most mine, if I do run them, I run them in a... Uh, droop set up exactly how they are in the instructions when you open the box it has a full set that tells you which springs um, and everything like that I generally will run the softer springs in the front and then I will run the medium springs in the rear if I'm running desert lizards a couple other good shocks TRX4 RTR shocks and and any of the element RC RTR 90 millimeter shocks both are a really good shock for an RTR um, vehicle um, there are some mods available for both of them I know more specifically the TRX4 shock through Dixieland RC they do make a TRX4 comp shock mod. So that is something to look at if you are wanting to use your TRX4 shocks, you really like the TRX4 shock and want to keep going with them, but maybe make them better, check it out, check out that mod. Um, the next two, you start searching for shocks on just about any page, <coughs> uh, RC comp wise, and then you're gonna hear modified Traxxas big boards and draft tech shocks. There are some other um, shocks out there too that are on the higher end because they've kind of became unicorns. I haven't had any experience with them, so I'm going to roll past those. A lot of your older guys will recommend some of the other shocks. So, Modified Traxxas Big Bore and Draptech shocks. They're very, very similar shock. Building a set of, <clears throat> you can get a set of four Draptechs. I believe it's around $75, $79. <clears throat> um, plus taxes and shipping, and you can build a full set of modded big boards for about, again, about the $75, $70, $75 range. So they're very comparable in price, and they're both great in performance. I've used drive techs before. I've had great luck with drive techs. I like the drive techs, and on the Deluxe Fab website, you can get the drive techs in some really cool anodized colors, and also on the Deluxe, even if you are building a different shock or a big board, they have a lot of different shock modifications available, such as offset um, shock caps, your no preload uh, cups, spring cups, springs, and a uh, bunch of other good stuff with them. So, 
those are really good shock. I do recommend those as well. Um, what I've come to build, um, my favorite, my go-to is a modified Traxxas Big Board. I use 2660s. Um, also, this became a big convenience thing for me. Uh, my local hobby town generally always has 2660s in stock. So, yeah, they always, uh, sorry, the doggos needed a treat there. I had to pause the video. Um, so anytime I'm looking to uh, either change up, change up some shocks or build a new truck, um, they always have them in stock. So it's just been convenient. I go down, pick up a couple sets of 2660s. I generally always have um, a couple extra uh, packs hidden away of either the low mini T springs or a few sets of the draft tech springs. And my local man here, Theron, he does all my 3D printing for me. So he always prints me up uh, two or three sets of no preload spring cup, spring cap spring cups um so i always have a couple extra uh, to change out or in case something does happen i haven't had any problems with the 3d printed uh ones breaking i've been using them for quite some time haven't had any any issues there so uh brands other shocks there so next length um generally speaking you're going to be somewhere around that 90 millimeter range and again that can also depend on the style you're building if you're building um just a you know lcg but a trail truck you can go a little taller for that more you know taller truck look or more scale look or you can just you know go fully slam there um and that's just researching and searching and searching that's just been a this size um is a good place to start and works well there um you could go longer with the different sets of the big bores uh, the draft decks come in three different sizes as well that again is going to come down to personal preference um, I like the shorter shocks. The uh, 2660s are 84, 85 millimeters. Eyelet to eyelet. I was a huge change when I dropped everything from 90s to these shocks. Got that CG and everything down. And also, I did um, start running hard bodies on everything as well, too. So, that helped with that CG. Um, 90 millimeters is going to be a good range. If you are running porter, portals, you're definitely going to be in that 90 range, maybe even down to 80 millimeters, you know, to help. Um, get that CG down with the portals obviously there so that's a good general range and again that's gonna depend you know all this shock tune everything really depends on your rig um, next up your uh, droop versus non droop again it's gonna depend on your build I prefer the droop setup myself I like the way they work I've had good luck I haven't had any problems it's been the most consistent for me so I just stick with it I get to the point where I like something and I just kind of stick with it. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of people like or um, running droop in the front and then just a little bit of preload in the rear, you know, and everything there. That's just what fits your fancy, what fits your truck, what fits your drive style, what fits your terrain. And the terrain is a huge part on this as well. Um, just, you know, you don't want to, you know, when you're adjusting all this, you're going to be tuning for side hill abilities, incline abilities, and just general crawling abilities. Um, what you don't I mean, if you don't go out a whole lot or your area is all side hill, you know, you're going to want to tune more for side hill than, say, straight vertical climbing. If you're more vertical, you're obviously going to tune a lot more for more vertical climbing than side hill. Um, if you do travel a lot, you are going to find and build around that happy medium where you have a great side hill ability and a good incline ability as well. And if you're comping, most likely going to have a winch too. So, when in doubt, winch out. Uh, next, shock spring rates and oil. Um, again, very weight. You don't want to put a super stiff spring on a super light truck and vice versa. Same with oil. You don't want a light oil on a heavy truck. And, you know, you get the picture. Um, I, the setup that's all generally... Works for me on uh, my three comp rigs. I have low C mini T springs. I run orange in the rear, pink in the front. That works for me. That works for my setup. It may not work for you. It may work for you. Uh, so when you're setting up, I definitely recommend when you're getting ready to start tuning some shocks, working with some positioning stuff. I definitely recommend picking up uh, at least a maybe a set or two of the mini T springs so you can play around and change out the different firmnesses, and then or grabbing a few sets of the draft tech springs as well, just to have a different. A couple different spring rates to play with. Um, you want to just get one set and you don't like it, and you end up waiting a little, having to wait and order some more. Just get a few sets. You know, there are springs; they're not much. 
it's good to have extra in case something does happen or extra when you want to build something new. And shock oil, same way, you're going to want to pick a couple different bottles, a couple different weights of shock oil. Um, I'm not necessarily any brand specific with shock oil. I think I do use the um, low C shock oil, or I have more low C shock oil. I think it's just what I grab. Um, generally, I find what I found tuning on mine is I will, um, if I'm doing the same weight oil all around, I'll start with a 35 weight and then kind of work from there. And honestly, once I get the front, you know, where it, you know, it compresses good, it has the flex I want to have. I have a softer spring in the front and a softer weight in the oil. I have my shocks positioned. I usually leave the front alone. I will mess and adjust the crap out of the rear. Um, I just get more results. And generally, I tune and I answer my problem like, oh, this is what I needed to do. So there's really not a clear cut, this oil, this spring. I mean, this oil and this spring may be the combo that works for the majority of the rigs, but it comes down to you, your driving, um, not necessarily your driving, your specific vehicle, what you're going for. Um, but 35 weight, I found is a good place to start. My comp rigs minus my class one because it loves cupcakes. Um, actually, it is, I think, I think it is 40 and 45. And then the front on my two and three, they're 35 front, 45 rear. Um, that's just, it's worked for me. So I let it be. Um, some days I, I will plan on just, you know, messing around doing some more uh, messing with that. But have you a couple bottles, you can either start even all around about 30, 35 weight, depending on your uh, the weight of your truck, or you can go with you know a 35 or a 30 and then a 35. You got the general idea. Um, it's not a bad place to start. But again, it worked for me. It might not, but hopefully it does work for you as well. Um, next, when you're setting up uh, G-Speed, you got your shocks all mounted up and you're ready to go out and do some tuning. Um, after, you know, post after post on the pages and seeing where people are positioning stuff, seeing where people are having the best luck. Um, I prefer and use the, on the front, the top row for the sole towards the transmission. And in the back, I used bottom hole, or sorry, top hole furthest through the front. On this particular truck, I'm trying different things, so I haven't moved around. And when you're ready to start doing this, um, whether you go to your local spot or you have a, a good little test area, a couple rocks or a, you know, flat board, whatever you use at home, use that find that find a good you know not super crazy line but a good moderate line that you know and then use that from there you know go over the line how fast do you do the line how much wheels do your spin how much does your truck flex do you you know too much body twist and then work from there and then slowly you know okay let's say i'm twisting you know it's just it's just constantly twisting okay take those shocks move them um back a notch, move them down a notch, you know, put a little more pressure, put a little more preload on that, on the rear there, and see what it does. Okay, did it a little bit better, cool, you're on the right path. You know, and just keep, <clears throat> I'm gonna do that line several times, you know, just to see what it is and get a feel. And that way you can actually see what you're changing and what you're adjusting there. Rather you move it back, move it too far, you're like, oh, whoa, that just, it, it laid over. Okay, cool. Let me go all the way back here where I was looking good and, you know, kind of work your way from there and you'll work to find that spot that works for you so overall and i'll try to do um as soon as i get some more time works a little hectic right, hectic right now um, daylight savings is coming up so i will have more than 35 minutes of sunlight after work so maybe a couple nights after work i can just do a me one-on-one -on -one video and go through some of that but anyway in the meantime i hope that's a good starting point on helping you get some shocks picked out uh and um you know a basic understanding and setup on shock tuning uh, until then, have a good one, everyone. You know, enjoy out there. Keep building. Crawl on.